Well, good evening. Here's another episode of Amateur Car Repair Hacks, also known as the Trial and Error Guys. Only one of us tonight. But uh, have you ever got an old Honda Accord and the windshield wipers are all over the place? They're banging, they're going from side rail to bottom housing, making lots of noise. There just seems to be a lot of play in them when they're actually in the stationary position. You could have a linkage problem, could be a motor problem, could be something as simple as a bushing problem. Being an amateur car repair hack, I don't really know, so I'm going to replace everything. Uh, so this is a 2004 Honda Accord, and it's about time to get ready for business. You can see here, just some basic stuff to get started. Uh, I love this little flathead tool. It's better. It's certainly much more effective than a uh, flathead screwdriver because it really helps you pop any of the... Uh, Plastic rivets, plastic buttons, or plastic clips without damaging them too much. And Lord knows with these Honda Accords, they're everywhere. Um, if you're also like me, I lose stuff all the time. So I've got my little magnetic ashtray. Uh, I've got a couple of tools ready with 17 millimeter socket so that I can pull the windshield wipers off first. Flathead and pliers, and then we'll just learn from there. So let's get started. Okay, first thing you need to do is go ahead and get these windshield wiper arms off got the little uh, rubber cover that's over the nut that's holding that first arm on we'll use our 17 millimeter socket to go ahead and just break that baby loose and we'll just do the same for the other and come off pretty easy now some of these they are a little little tricky in how you get them off so we'll have to kind of wiggle it around a little bit to get that baby pulled off but it won't be much of a problem there's really not too much to them. You do have to kind of wiggle them a little bit just to kind of get them off. Same with this one as well. Just kind of wiggle them a little bit and then set them aside. Probably a good time to uh, change out those blades as well. I've started using the new beam blades, which has a continuous support across rather than the, you know, you know six point, eight point connectors they have now. I, I really like the new beam blades. Hopefully we'll see if they hold up as long as the uh, sales guy tells us. I think at this time I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, weather stripping off since this is a, a multiple piece cowl. And again, I've got my little uh, flatbed plot, uh, sorry, flathead pry tool. And I don't really know where the clips are, but I'll just kind of walk it along. You can see up here and just look for those little clips and just kind of pop those off wherever I get to one. And I'll have to work it from this side as well. And of course, one thing I really think why this pry tool is superior to a flathead is it, it will go in and get both sides of that. Many times with a flathead, you'll actually shear off the little stem. But, and granted, they're not, you know, too expensive. You can replace them easily if you got the time, but why if you don't have to? So, as you can see, the pry tool just reaches around the stem, still pops the head up evenly. It makes it just kind of a pretty easy way to, to, to work these. These guys loose. Now, there she is. Got her. Now, after popping free all the plastic clips, you notice there are a few little rubber trim pieces that make it a little snug around the, uh, the hood hinge. But if you just kind of work it enough, you can get things out. Now, you do want to be careful because you notice in here you've got your supply feeds, uh, you've got your uh, uh, windshield wiper fluid hoses. So I'm just going to pull things off and lay them on the side. But here's how you can see some of these clips that I was popping that are fixed as opposed to the black ones that were the surface mounted clips. But you can see she starts to come off with just a little wiggling, a little bit of tugging. Okay, well the first part of discovery is done. Since we're kind of figuring this out as we go. Plus, special thanks to other folks who have posted other instructions online and parts of the videos too. Hopefully this one will kind of tie them all together to make it easy to follow. But what you'll see here is I've got both of the two parts of the cowl pulled off. Saved all the buttons, clips, everything in place. Now don't laugh, but you know what? I am kind of a clean freak. And these cars are notorious for getting leaves, pine needles stuck down in all of the vents and all the crooks and crannies. So I just clean it out a little bit while I'm going. I mean, everybody knows the car runs better when it's clean, right? 
All right. Well, now we're getting ready to the nitty gritty stuff. Got a 10 millimeter ratchet because there are four bolts that we'll need to remove off the linkage of the motor. And I went ahead and turned it on in case you always wondered how these things work. You can see that the motor is driving the two arms. The arms through gears are actually what is turning the actual threaded rods and that's what each wiper arm sits on and moves them back and forth. Got three of the four bolts out using the 10 millimeter ratchet. Just make sure you have your uh, socket extension tool because some of these are a little bit hard to get to. Uh, certainly makes life a little bit easier. Uh, but once you get them loose, they really are something you can actually just hand torque right out. So they've got a washer that's also attached to it. So just make sure you don't start dropping things. Okay, so after getting those four bolts out, this thing just kind of lifts out. You know, it's a little tight in there, a little snug. But uh, once again, you start wiggling things around and you can get them out. Tell you what, the thing we loved about were the compactness of these cars, but sure makes them tough to work on. So next, I'm going to unplug the electrical supply to the motor and unbox the new one. Now, at the outset of the video, I mentioned a common problem with these older Hondas is if you wear out a bushing or the linkage becomes damaged maybe the motor doesn't work like it should or the bushings are gone it just causes a lot of racket it's it's you know they're flying off the windshield frame and yet you really don't know i mean this is one of those things where yeah if i'd been a better mechanic i might have been a replace just a specific part but you can see here how this arm is so worn and i think that's probably the culprit from all the play of why this thing was just going all over the spot. Just years of abuse, I should just say, of friction has just worn that baby down. Okay, here's the last step in removing the old transmission housing and motor. There's a little squeeze tab here at the bottom of the electrical jack. We just kind of push that in right there, pull her straight out, then go sell the old on eBay if you can. Mine's going in the junkyard. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier before I removed this, there was a lot of play in this arm. And you can see what happens when your bushings get worn. Now, this is obviously too far gone. Sometimes the bushings will, will break off. You can replace those. That's a $4 part. This is a little bit more significant. But you can see why we have all that play in it. Because over time, that metal has continued to wear and wear and where so the only way to replace was to either get a replacement arm from the junkyard or buy a whole new transmission and linkage i guess you call that the easy way out well since i decided to go ahead and replace the windshield wiper transmission and the linkage all at one time just thinking that it's a 2004 if something hasn't failed yet it may fail soon so anyway all this together ran about 200 bucks for as you can see the housing but you'll notice this was the worn piece that you saw in the previous video and you see how tight that metal is also this one that's going to fit over the motor arm but everything has all the new rubber bushings new plastic bushings so hopefully this will give us another 20 or 30 years of lovely honda use here's the motor and you can kind of see where all that slips through and attaches. So we'll be putting this together on the car here momentarily. All right, so here, just for comparison's sake, you wanna make sure if you're purchasing these parts online that you have the correct model number, everything fits your car. Lots of uh, databases that are built into a lot of these car part websites. So you can double check that stuff before you either order them or go to the store itself. These are pretty similar. Uh, you can see here, here's the old transmission with the old motor still attached. And looks like, the new motor actually comes with all new screws, so I don't really need to save anything from the old uh, parts, as I can tell right now. So I'm just going to take these screws out, put them back into the new transmission, similar to what we have that was existing, and uh, then connect that linkage arm, and hopefully we'll be ready to reinstall this thing back into the Honda. Like I said earlier, there may have been cheaper fixes just to kind of modify or patchwork some of this. But since this is a, a car that's not going to be here in town, it's my daughter's, 
uh, just want to make sure it was done right. So you can see now with replacing the new motor and fully new transmission, it's going to have new threaded parts, so hopefully we'll hold up without any problems. Did notice one thing though when unpacking the transmission. We are missing this one arm. You'll notice there's no way to connect this linkage to the motor drive. So I'm going to actually take this one off the old one. Uh, they should fit perfectly since this is an OEM spec part. And uh, just a minute, we'll have everything hooked up, ready to put back in. One quick trip to the store, because as a trial and error guy, I kind of learn as I go. Um, you know, in order to get that linkage back onto that arm, uh, need a little bit of grease. Not silicone, not WD-40, but real, just general purpose automotive grease. So I'm just going to coat this ball and socket, or bushing I should say, and then I'm just going to smash that down with some channel locks. As a trial and error guy, it doesn't always work. You notice where I was using the channel locks to attach that bushing. Pushed down a little bit too hard and cracked it. Now, I could say, let's just put this on, and I'm sure it'll be fine, which is, at my age, you learn that this thing will rear up its ugly head a year from now, and you'll have to do the whole thing all over again. So, what do you do? Well, remember the old parts? I just take the bushing off the old one, gonna pop this on, and gently reinsert this bushing. Let's see if I have better luck the second time around. Well, as the trial and error, guys, here's one of those errors that's really testing my trials. Um, you know, you spend $200 on really nice steel parts and new motors and such, and the weak link in the chain is the little bitty plastic bushing. That's right. There's a little plastic bushing that will attach this metal shaft to the linkage of the transmission of the uh, wiper transmission and you know those things I don't know if they're just cheaper I'm doing something wrong but they crack when I was trying to put the one that came with it onto this assembly so stores are closed gonna go get some parts tomorrow basically a couple of bushings with the rings they're about five bucks try again I'll catch up with you well, we're back on track after a slight delay. Like I said, the previous episode, thanks to a cheap plastic part. Yes, that is the weak link in the chain, or the weak link in the linkage, if you will. Anyway, uh, found these uh, plastic bushings. This is the closest inside. They do not fit the Honda Accord, but I bored out the end of the linkage just a little bit, and then used two sockets and a rubber mallet and was actually able to place this over one socket so that this thing had to be force fit through. You can see my first attempt. Um, and then this smaller ratchet actually fit over the top of the dome. So hopefully this thing will work, but a little bit of lube, a little bit of touch and was able to actually squeeze it through. Okay, now here's the tricky part. I need a little help on the internet since there is a correct synchronization uh, for, the, for the wiper arms to work properly with the linkages. So uh, what I learned was A, after getting that Garmin bushing put on, and it is on the shaft, I'm now ready to run the windshield wipers so that the motor itself will reset itself in the proper off position. You can see here that by turning the key to the ignition setting, without turning on the motor, I uh, just actually just turned the windshield wipers on. You can see the motor is turning, and you see how when all this goes back together, how that motor moves that linkage arm that makes the entire assembly move the windshield wipers. But So I'm just running that, then I'm going to turn the windshield wipers off, and then turn the car off. Now something I did notice from the original transmission that was removed, was that there were three markings here, and that is supposed to signify the alignment of the arm and the linkage connector uh, on the motor. That is not present on this replacement piece. So I'm only going to assume, since it is supposedly OEM specs, 
that everything would still be in the same alignment but that is basically a reasonable guess I would think not sure why uh, they did not include those markings because that is pretty significant when you're trying to get this thing synchronized so we'll see if it all works out that way now since I went ahead and reattached the linkages I once again pulled that arm back off and I am going to recycle that one more time because I am just kind of paranoid because everything is always trial and error so we're going to run that again and then we'll be ready to hook it back up and just to be clear that it was cycled properly I didn't just turn the windshield wipers on and then off I actually used the uh, wiper fluid toggle so that uh, it automatically would reset at the proper time after it's cycling twice and, and you'll see now that since everything is in proper alignment there's no way to get a ratchet back in this time so I'm just going to use an open head monkey wrench this is a 17 millimeter just go ahead and tighten that thing back down there over that lock washer now you can see here that I accidentally twisted the motor some when I was actually locking down that lock washer so it's not stopping in the correct alignment so I'm gonna have to back that off again and see if I can straighten her up well trial and error again my motor was actually running backwards but of course it wasn't the motor that was running backwards it was just that I had the linkages reversed by having the <clears throat> pieces above the housing remember everything's upside down right now so I had everything reversed so all I had to do was again pull that arm off after taking off the lock nut rotate this down around to the bottom of the transmission uh, orientation shall we say so now I'm gonna put things back together and it should run in the correct direction so just one more thing there's nothing wrong with your motor it just means your linkage linkage arms are in the wrong orientation when you hook everything up Well, this has also been an interesting conundrum because after hooking everything up, my windshield wipers ran in the reverse direction. Now, after comparing it to the old motor and hooking it back up again, it turns out that this new motor runs in the reverse direction. Now, nothing has been modified, no rewiring done, so I'm totally at a loss about why the new motor runs counter to the original motor's rotation. This has nothing to do with the linkages. This is the actual motor itself is running backwards. Well, after a little bit of back and forth with the auto parts store, it turns out I think that their actual database is not correct because the WAI wiper motor, which is supposedly their replacement for the Honda Accord 2004 still runs in reverse and this is after trying a second motor from the store so unfortunately i'm sending this one back and i've cleaned up the old motor i'm just gonna have to take a chance because i'm up against the clock here uh so i'm just gonna have to reinstall the old motor but it's pretty obvious you know when the drive is going one direction and the new one is going the opposite direction it just won't work so change of plans but we're going to start putting her back together now with the old motor. We now install the old motor, since it does rotate in the correct direction, back onto the uh, wiper transmission. The linkages are in the correct position, so I'm going to run it through <clears throat> the uh, wiper cycle just so we get it in the correct parking position for the motor, and then we'll go ahead and line up the arm and the linkage and connect those and now just before I put the lock washer and the nut back on that arm I just want to verify that even though I do not have the markings on the new transmission it will line up just like the original one that had the three markings so you can see now we're ready to go ahead and lock this baby down so am I using my open end monkey wrench for a 17 millimeter 
and you gotta take it really slow to cinch that lock washer down because you don't want to move the motor gears you certainly don't want to move the linkage but by holding those in place and taking it real slow you can lock that baby down okay we're doing one final test just to make sure everything's working so this is just on regular cycle and then I'm going to do the wiper wash cycle so it'll reset itself and stop in the correct position. So let's see how that does. And hopefully she'll be all lined up when she stops. Yep, perfectly. Now I didn't make up this euphemism but truthfully the tools do make the man. Because if you don't have the right tools and do an auto mechanics work, it can be a nightmare. Just finishing up these guys. Make sure they're good and tight. I do like to hand tighten everything before I ratchet it on down. Just to make sure everything's lined up. Alright, so about time to put on the cowl. Make sure the wiper fluid hoses are still intact. And then we'll get the wiper arms put on. Right before you flip the cowls back over and get them lined up to snap back in, you might want to make sure the windshield uh, washer nozzles are clear, clean, connected, all the hoses are still good. Just as one final little inspection. Well, as you can see, the cowl has now been reinstalled. Clean the weather stripping and put it back on because these cars are notorious for catching a lot of leaves and junk in there so uh, also make sure you don't miss any of your little plastic tabs make sure they go all the way through the metal holes in the car body just to hold in place after that double checking all the snaps that they're back in place and looks like we're now ready to put on the wiper arms <clears throat> took the chance to go ahead and change out the uh, wiper blades as well I am trying these uh, the new beam style blades. I'm not recommending any one particular product or another since I'm kind of new to this too. But when you figure it's got continuous points of connection, hopefully it'll give a little bit better cleaning. Uh, maybe even last a bit longer. So time to set the wiper arms and let's see what happens. After tightening down the uh, nuts on the uh, wiper arms, I think it's probably trying to I'm going to see if we can really make this thing any better. Now, you can see there's a whole lot less play than there was with the old transmission. So, let's see what happens. The moment of truth. Okay, you can see we've reinstalled the wiper arms with the new blades. They are in the low park position, kind of estimating about where they might be. I may have to adjust them first after we try this, but you can see all you have to do is just tighten up those two nuts on your wiper arms and you are ready to try them out so here we go with the moment of truth how about that a moment of victory <laughs> oh boy.